Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Judges at the county fair take a look at these. Pe <laughs> That's a scarecrow you're setting on, you stupid crow. Scare! <laughs> See one of yours? No, ma'am, can I have him? You can have him in a pie. And then blasted chickens with him. <laughs> <laughs> This is too much. Milburn? Milburn! How long must I endure those sordid sharecroppers? What is it, dear? I'm late. Granny is... Aren't you going to the office? Yes. As a matter of fact, they're taking some pictures of me for an ad campaign. The idea is to project a new youthful image for the bank. So I thought I would dress accordingly. Well, the carpets are... <laughs> What is that? It's just a little hairpiece. I am prematurely gray, you know. How's it look? Ridiculous. <laughs> now go next door and tell... Margaret, I am supposed to personify youthful, vigorous leadership. Then personify it by vigorously leading the Clampets out of Beverly Hills. Anyone with $50 million is entitled to live in a mansion. If only they'd live in it, with the doors and windows closed and the curtains drawn. But no. They have to root about outside, dig in the soil. Look at Granny. She's only trying to grow a prize-winning tomato, which reminds me, I'm posing with a beautiful model. What? Ad campaign, my dear. Business, business. But what about the clampets? Later, my dear. Duty calls. <laughs> Posing with an ostrich? Yep. Yeah. He's gonna be the symbol of her whole campaign. Take a look at that ad layout sketch. Don't bury your head in the sand. Look to the future with the Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills. Well, well that, that's fine, but Mr. Drysdale seems to be under the impression that he's posing with a beautiful model. No, I tossed it out. It's old hat. Why, uh, this uh, ostrich idea is fresh. It'll give us a whole series of ads. Like, uh, don't stick your neck out. Take a giant step forward. <laughs> Feather your nest. It'll be terrific. Miss Hathaway. Well, I hope the chief thinks so. <laughs> chief! How's this? Projects that useful image, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does. Did uh, Nelson find a model? Well, yes, Well, but how I... does she look? Beautiful figure. Fantastic legs. <laughs> 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 There's an ostrich in my office. Yeah, she's the model for the new ad campaign. That's right, Mr. Drysdale. Here's a layout. Are you out of your mind? I'm not posing with that goofy-looking bird. Say, 
You know, it would be a better picture without you. <laughs> Just a big close-up of the ostrich looking right in the camera. A real attention getter. You're fired. Now take that thing back to its owner. Okay. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Drysdale. Her name is Miriam. What's the idea? You're the owner. Me? Make sure that she'd be available for the whole campaign. The bank had a buyer. They could care of her. It cost you $2,000. Bye. I'll send my bill in the mail. What am I going to do with an ostrich? You can give it to the zoo. Give? I want my money out of this thing. Well, we can advertise it, but meanwhile, where are we going to keep her? Miss Hathaway, I've often heard you mention how lonely it is in your apartment. How would you like to have a roommate? <laughs> oh, sure. Well, think it over. I understand a pet bird can be a lot of company. Gee, but I can't keep an ostrich in my tiny apartment. Move into a larger one. No. Wait. All right. Have somebody take it up and put it in my garage temporarily. But get those ads going. Yes, sir. Sh shall I buy one large ad or a series of... Buy nothing. Every supermarket has a free bulletin board. I've got enough money tied up in that feathered freak. For sale, one ostrich. At cost, $2,500. $25? Our time is worth something. <laughs> $2,500. Ah! Come back with my hair! Ravenswood, what a magnificent tomato. Wherever did you find it? Right at your front door, the greengrocer's truck. That's exactly what I want. How would you like it prepared? Oh, it's not to eat. I hope it will discourage Granny from trying to grow her own. I know, because Miss Drysdale, this is a fine tomato. Surely Granny will realize she can't possibly grow anything as large as this. Oh, it's a whopper, all right. I never seen one to beat it, even back home. Where'd you grow this? I didn't have to grow it. The butler got it from my vegetable man, right at the front door. Hmm. Mind if I show it to Granny? Please do. I hope it'll convince her that all this Digging and planting is a waste of time. She'll never produce a prize-winning tomato. Miss Drysdale growed this. Well, she let it slip that her butler and vegetable man done the work. But they growed it out by her front door. And you can bet your boots she'll take credit for it at the county fair. No, we ain't sure that she... I know that spiteful woman. She'd do anything to beat me. Why, she never cared shucks about growing nothing till she seen me do it. That's true. Well, we'll see who wins first prize. Where are you going? I'm gonna stir me up the doggondest batch of tomato growing tonic you ever seen. Didn't know you had one. I don't. I'm gonna invent one. And by the time the fair rolls around, my tomatoes will make that thing look like a bloodshot gooseberry. <laughs> Granny, that's about all them tomatoes can take right now. Your tonic is puddling up on the ground. Douse them again. Well, why not let it soak in overnight and give them some more in the morning? I'll make another batch in the morning. Them tomatoes have got to be forced grown. Well, you can only push nature so far. Don't you tell me what I can do. It's coming on for dark. We'll get lanterns. Your tonic's convinced to run out. If we pour on any more, it'll just run over into Miss Drysdale's yard. All right, we'll start again at sunup. Oh, Granny. You be here with your bucket at the crack of dawn. I'm kind of sorry I showed Granny Miss Drysdale's tomato. Sure put grit in her gizzard. Never seen her so worked up. She's plumb wild-eyed. Well, we got to remember that back home, Granny used to win a lot of prizes with her tomatoes. And she was counting big on showing up these California folks. Yeah, Miss Drysdale whooped her before she even got started. <laughs> do no laughing around Granny. You'd be sleeping horse-style tonight. Well, what you mean? Standing up. <laughs> Oh, 
Milbank. Milbank, wake up. What, what, what? Someone's trying to break into our garage. Garage? Yes, I can hear them pounding on the door. Oh, that's the ostrich. Ostrich? She'll quiet down and go back to bed. <laughs> See, I told you she'd quiet down. What's an ostrich doing in our garage? Waxing the car. <laughs> Take it back to bed. <laughs> But it'll be coming up pretty soon. You go roust the rest of the family. I want to see how much my tomatoes has grown. You was good size yesterday. You really ought to be a whopper bite. Where'd you go? Chicken tracks. They ate my prized tomatoes. When I get my hands on you, you're gonna be chicken stew. Uh -huh. I got you. Now you're gonna kiss me. <laughs> the growing tonic. <laughs> Kate. Me. I didn't see no big chicken. I didn't feel no big chicken. I just got up too early. Morning, Granny. Morning, Jed. My, that coffee smells good. Yeah. Well, there's another pot on the stove. I finished this one. That's a heap of coffee. Well, I want to make sure I'm good awake when I go out to look at my tomatoes. You're going to be awake for the next three days. <laughs> well, come on. Let's go look at the tomatoes. No, wait now, Jed. You just sit there and have your coffee. <laughs> I want to see them alone first. How come? Well, they my tomatoes, and they was doused with my growing tonic, and, well, uh, Never mind. Now, you, you just stay there. <laughs> Funny the things you think you see in the dark. <laughs> Seven foot chicken. <laughs> Drumsticks like that. <laughs> Everything looks different in the daylight. <laughs> sure did seem real last night, though. Here I was, walking along, and all of a sudden, there was that seven-foot chicken. <laughs> oh, no. I turned a sweet little hen into a monster. You can only push nature so far. Well, it ain't my fault. Why didn't you stay out of my tomato patch? <laughs> that tonic has grown you all out of shape. <laughs> It's not that you ain't good looking. It's just that you're kind of different. <laughs> your middle hasn't caught up with your neck or your drumsticks. <laughs> I don't want to be around when it does. <laughs> but now, don't you worry. I'm going to invent something to shrink you back to size. <laughs> but until I do, I got to find some place to hide you. Now, you stay right here. <laughs> in Drysdale's garage till they get up. Then I'll... Where'd you go? Oh, no! Get out of there! Don't drink that! That's the stuff that did it to you, you crazy chicken! <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess you don't feel too happy about this, neither. <laughs> I got a place to hide you for a spell. <laughs> I can't figure out what Granny's doing down there all this time. I thought she'd have us out there sloshing on tomato tonic at sunup. Well, she was kind of upset this morning. She... She went out of here... <laughs> Boy? Huh? How many bowls you had now? Just one. One? 
Yes, sir. Filled it five times. This is the only bowl. Here she is. Oh, hi, Granny. How your tomatoes look? Did they grow much? No. No, they didn't. Well, we'll go right down and tonic them. Come on, Jethro. No, no, wait. That tonic didn't do so good. I got to make up a new batch. Oh, good. That'll give me time for a couple more helpings. No, 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 you won't. I want everybody out of my kitchen. Well, I'll go feed chicken. No, 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 I'll do that. Well, there's plenty of other chores around the place. Come on, young'un. Uh -uh. I, I just remembered. I need some stuff for my new tonic. Y'all go get it for me. What do you need? Pasadena berries. <laughs> Pasadena berries? I never heard of them. What do they look like? You'll find out when you get to Pasadena. <laughs> Go out the front door. It's closer to Pasadena. What? Well, uh, she's right, youngins. Uh, come on, let's go. Now look, high pockets. I'm gonna do everything I can, but you gotta stay where I put you. If there's one thing I can't abide, it's a pushy chicken. <laughs> now wait right there. <laughs> Forget it, Earl. <laughs> Reckon you young'uns were smart enough to see right through Granny's business about the Pasadena berries. Sure, Pa. Heck yeah. Good. Want to take along some baskets for the berries or pick them up in Pasadena? <laughs> yeah, well, there ain't no such thing. Well, yes, there is. That's where they hold a rose parade. <laughs> Pa's talking about berries. Oh. Now, we all know that there's something mighty powerful vexing Granny or she wouldn't have gone to such trouble to get shit of us. Now, the way I got it figured... Uncle Jed, can't we talk about this on the way to Pasadena? <laughs> Boy, we ain't going to Pasadena. But how else are we going to get Pasadena buried? Jethro, Granny just said that to get us out of the house so we wouldn't find out what's got her jumpy as a grasshopper in a chicken pen. <laughs> now, the way I got it figured, it's got something to do with the tomatoes. So let's get around back and take a look. Uh, before we go to Pasadena? <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh, well, want me to get some berry baskets? No. Uh -oh, well, where, where, where are we going to put them? How about your hat? Oh, well, I ain't wearing no hat. Well, get one, because a brain like yours ought to be protected. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Jim. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, Miss Hathaway to see you. Good morning. Chief. Good morning. Sit down and have some coffee. I'll get some fresh. Stuff. I wanted to bring you the good news. We have two possible buyers for the ostrich. Wonderful. Where is it? In the garage. No, I just looked there. The side door's open and the ostrich is gone. Gone? I'm afraid so. Stone. So that's what I heard last night. Somebody broke in and took my $2,000 bird. Call the police. Well, now, Chief, maybe it got out and wandered off. Don't you think we should look for it first? Is it insured? Afraid not. Well, then we'll look for it. Now, you cover the Benson estate. I'll take the Clampets and Ravenswood. You search our grounds. Uh, very good, sir. Uh, beg pardon, sir, but what are we hunting for? Ostrich. Wouldn't we have better luck in Africa, sir? <laughs> and blame pushy chicken. <laughs> the best I can. I'm working a gin time trying to come up with a chicken shrinker. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I know you got a right to be upset. And I know I hadn't ought to meddle with nature. <laughs> but give me a chance. <laughs> Big overgrown pullet. <laughs> Come in and watch. <laughs> my dog is the ripe ones is all gone. Well, it wasn't my chickens that got him on his pole. I know that. They couldn't even reach them high ones. 
Well, maybe the crows got him. They was a big one here yesterday. Yeah, that could be. He brung a bunch of his friends over here and had a tomato party. <laughs> Looky here, Uncle Jed. Ain't nothing left hanging on the vine except these little old green rascals. Get through, you hadn't ought to pick them. Well, how else was I going to fetch them to you? Unless I ripped up the vines. What's the matter with you this morning? Nothing, except I'm awful hungry. Hungry? You had five bowls of plate. That's just it. I never got to finish breakfast. <laughs> How do we know it's got Granny all upset? Yeah, she ain't gonna win no prize with these. Hey, young'uns, we gotta go down to the store and get Granny the best tomatoes we can find. Well, she ain't likely to win no prize with store-bought tomatoes, neither. No, but we can make her think she could have won, and sometimes that's just as good. Hey, Uncle Jed, are we gonna go to the store before we go to Pasadena and pick berries? <laughs> yes, sir. Try to get this through your head. We ain't going to Pasadena to pick berries. Now, come on, let's go to the store. Oh, I see. We're gonna buy them ready-picked. <laughs> well, I hope this does it. I put all my scientific know-how into this one shrinking pill. <laughs> and if it don't work, well, we won't talk about that. So, cross your fingers or your feathers or whatever you do and hope for the best, because here we go. <laughs> you need some water to help you swallow it? Grab it! Granny! Anyone home? Come on, come on, get it down. You gotta shrink back to chicken size before anybody sees you. Hello? Where is everybody? We'll never make it. <laughs> Come on, I gotta hide you. Move, you big clock. <laughs> Anybody here? <laughs> How nice to see you. You must come again sometime. Bye. Uh, Granny, I want to talk to you. Are you alone? Just me and the chicken. Just as chickens. <laughs> well, I, I want to know if you've seen my ostrich. Your what? Ostrich. It cost me $2,000. Oh, it must be a dandy. You can take me for a ride tomorrow. <laughs> Keep quiet, Granny! Granny! <laughs> I guess you don't know what an ostrich is. No, and I don't care. Now I'm busy. What was that? Somebody at the side door. Oh, well, I just wanted to see if you've seen a great big bird about so high, with a long neck, black feathers, and long legs. Have you? Well, yes, it was in my garage. You seen it? Yes. <laughs> You're having visions. I got to answer the door. <laughs> They got tired of waiting. Oh, that's terrible. I'll speak to them about it. Now! I'll tend to it. Now you get out or I won't have no house left. <laughs> oh, no. The pill didn't work. You're just as big as ever. Now, youngins, we got to make Granny believe that her growing tonic Turn them little green tomatoes into these since this morning. Reckon she'll swallow it, Pa? It's worth a try. She'll always believe it hadn't been for them crows eating the big ones. She'd have won a first prize sure as shooting. Hey, look at yonder. What's that? <laughs> Granny, what's she riding? Whoa, girl, whoa. Granny, what in tarnation is going on? Kid. I might not win no prize for my tomatoes, but wait till them judges take a look at my chicken. Now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.